Hey, this is Ken Reservoir. We're going to talk about domains and ranges of power functions. So I'm going to say let f of x be a power function of the form f of x equals x to the p over q power. And this is the basic rule I'm going to give to you. So let me mark this off. Sorry, this is so messy. I'm much better with a paper and pencil. But, okay, anyways, it says if q, q being the denominator there, let me highlight that in green, if q is even but not zero, then the domain of f of x is zero to infinity inclusive of zero. So I'm saying that if the denominator is even, then you will only have uh, inputs from um, 0 and to the right on your x-axis. If q is odd, the domain is negative infinity to infinity. It's unrestricted. So up here this is restricted, but this one is not restricted. Now why is that? Well let me remind you of some stuff we did in chapter 2 and here it is. Why? Recall that we cannot take an even root of a negative and get a real result. And because of that when we graphed y equals the square root of x we got a function that only went off that way. It did not have even symmetry. It had an even index Remember, the implicit index up here is 2, right? But it was not an even function because it was only defined for non-negative values of x, so 0 to infinity. So whenever we have an even indexed root, we can't plug in a negative and get a real result. When we plug in a negative, we get imaginary results. However, the odd root of a negative if it is itself a negative, then so the domain of odd index roots is unrestricted. Why? Because you can take the odd root of uh, a positive, zero, or a negative. It doesn't matter. So let me give you some questions like the kind you can expect. If f of x is the square root of 4x plus 12, and this could just as easily be the fourth root or the sixth root or any even root. So let me just put e up here for even root. Um, this is the same. Well, actually, I don't want to make it any root. I want to keep it a square root so you can understand my argument here. If f of x is the square root of uh, 4x plus 12. This is the same as f of x equals, I'm factoring out the 4, the square root of 4 times x plus 3. And since that is a perfect square, I can pull that out. And we say that my original function is a translation and a stretch, actually. Um, of our basic square root function. And so when we graph that, we start at what makes this term 0, which is negative 3. And starting at negative 3, which includes that, because you can take the square root of 0, and negative 3 plus 3 is 0. So it starts at negative 3, and it proceeds from there. So we see the domain is negative 3 to infinity, and the range is 0 to infinity. Um, if we did not want to graph this a technique I teach in intermediate algebra and I remind you of at the beginning of the class and we've talked about before is that to find the domain since a square root is an even root we can restrict the domain to values that leave the expression under the radical we call that the argument uh, we want to leave the expression under the radical non-negative. So to evaluate the domain, we solve the inequality 4x plus 12 is greater than or equal to 0. Where did I get 4x plus 12? That was the argument. And since whatever the argument is, 
it better not be negative, I say that 4x plus 12 must be greater than or equal to 0. And solving that, we get the same thing. Okay? So we can either, we could graph it, but that's not always so easy. Or we can set what's under the radical greater than or equal to 0 and find the domain that way. And again, that's a technique we teach in intermediate algebra, and we've already talked about this year. Um, if instead we were given g of x, now it's a odd root, it's a cube root. g of x is equal to the cube root of negative 8x plus 8. Well, that's the same as g of x equals the cube root of negative 8 times x minus 1. And when you pull that negative 8 out, because it's a perfect cube, you can see that this is a stretch, a, um, a vertical flip, and a translation of one space to the right of our regular cube root graph. The cube root graph is unrestricted. Its domain is negative infinity to infinity. Its range is also negative infinity to infinity. So it makes sense that if that is the graph we're translating, then it would also be unrestricted in its translated form. So what do I want to say here? When the index is odd, there are no restrictions on the domain. So positive, zero, and negative inputs for x all give real results for y. So here's the, the rule again. Let's go back up top. If it's a power function and the q is even but not zero, then the domain is zero to infinity. If q is odd, then the domain is negative infinity to infinity. If, however, it's not in this form, if it has, you know, some kind of translation applied to it and it's something like this, whenever this is even, you take what's under the radical and you say, that has to be greater than or equal to zero. If it's odd, then your answer for the domain is always negative infinity to infinity. All right, should I write that down here? Sure, why not? If f of x equals even root of some argument, find the domain by solving argument greater than or equal to zero. If f of x equals odd root of some argument, then domain is unrestricted. It's negative infinity to infinity. That's all I got to say about that. Hopefully that refreshes your memory. All right. Bye.